Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph um, this linear systems of inequalities. And to do that, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to graph each of these separately and then apply the shading that is going to be uh, true for both of our inequalities. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these, these equations to help me kind of graph them. And then I will go back to the inequalities as far as testing my solutions for, or testing solutions for shading, um, as well as determining if the boundary lines are going to be a part of the solution or not. So I'm going to rewrite these equations on each end as equations just to kind of help me graph so I can kind of remember you know what are the important parts of graphing. Now um, over here you can see both these equations are in standard form so as far as, you know, as far as graphing them in slope intercept form we're going to have to do some work and I'm actually going to take a separate step I'm actually going to decide to use intercept method for this problem because I noticed that my coefficients for x and y are both um, are, are are both divisible into our 12. So therefore, when I use the intercept method, I'm not going to be dealing with any fractions. So again, when dealing with the intercept method, what we're simply going to do is determine the x-intercept. And the x-intercept is when y equals 0. And we're going to determine the y-intercept, which is when x equals 0. So all we simply do to determine the x-intercept is you just plug 0 in for y. So I have 6x minus 2 times 0 equals 12. Well, that goes to 0, so I'm left with 6x equals 12 divide by 6, divide by 6, x equals 2. Now to find the y-intercept, I plug 0 in for x. Now I just solve for y. Uh, da, 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 da. So therefore I have negative 2y is equal to 12, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, y equals negative 6. So now I plot my x-intercept, which is um, if x equals 2, that means y equals 0. And my y-intercept, when y equals negative 6, that means x is going to be equal to 0. So I plot these two points, which is 1, 2, and 0, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right? Um, now, as far as going back to the boundary line, that's all going to be based on our inequality symbol. Since that is greater than or equal to and not just greater than, this is going to be a solid line. So I can connect my two intercepts with a solid line. So the intercept method is helpful a lot of times when you, especially having trouble you know, rewriting something in slope intercept form. For instance, that's what we're going to do over here because 12 is not divisible by our coefficients for, and actually it is. I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Well, rather than doing a slope intercept method for both of them, I'm going to rewrite this one in slope intercept form. So you can see that it's actually, just see both processes at work. Um, I can't believe I didn't say that before. Ah, well. All right, so to, to graph this in slope-intercept form, we need to solve for y. So to do that, we need to undo everything that's happening to our variable y, which is the first thing we see that's happening to our variable y is it's being added by 3x. So I subtract 3x on both sides. So therefore, I have 4y is equal to a negative 3x plus 12. Now I see my variable y is being multiplied by 4, so I divide by 4. So therefore, I have y. That goes to 1. y is equal to, make sure you divide the 4 into both of your terms. So I have a negative 3 fourths x plus 12 divided by 4 is 3. So in graphing the slope-intercept form, what's nice about slope-intercept form is we can quickly identify what is the slope and what is the y-intercept. Now, notice the slope is negative in this case. And it's very important for us to understand that negative 3 over 4 is equivalent to positive 3 over negative 4. As long as you have the negative 1 or the 2, um, it's going to be OK. But be very cautious when you have a negative. You don't put the negative in both of them, because that would actually make the slope positive. And our y-intercept is a coordinate point 0, 3. right? Just like how we kind of mentioned here, the x-coordinate for the y-intercept y is 0. So now let's go and plot our y-intercept, which is at 0, 3. So I'm going to go up to 1, 2, 3 and make a point. Now the slope, as far as identifying using the slope triangle, you can use either one of these slopes. Um, it doesn't matter if you say the change in the y-coordinates is positive or negative. Um, because when you say that the change in the y-coordinates is negative, well, the change in the x-coordinates is positive. When it's positive, the other one's negative. So I'm going to use this one. So that means the change in the y-coordinates between any two points is negative. So that means I'm going to go down three units, one, two, three. And then the change in the x-coordinates between any two points is positive. So I'm going to go over to the right four, one, two, three, four. Then I can connect these two points. But before I go ahead and connect, actually, a lot of times I always like to show my slope triangle. OK, but as you can see, that's kind of like my little slope triangle. Makes a right angle. But it's very important for us to understand, though, this is not going to be a solid line because our inequality symbol is, is greater than, not greater than or equal to. 
So I kept it solid for my slope triangle, but I want you guys to understand that this is actually a dashed line. Now, the last thing we need to do is determine our shading. And to determine our shading, we want to choose a test point that does not lie on either of the lines. And the best point to do uh, to choose when they, it's not on either line is the point 0, 0. Now, all I'm simply going to do is plug in 0 in for x and a y into both equations and determine if it's true or false. So let's plug 0, 0 into the first equation. So let's use a different color here. So let's do 6. Actually, I got more room over here. Maybe? No? Yes? OK, yeah, I do. So let's do 6 times 0 minus 2 times 0 is greater than or equal to 12. Well, 0, 0, 0 is greater than or equal to 12. That is obviously false. So for my first boundary line here, um, my test point is false. That means I am going to be shading below my line. You always shade um, where it's true. So if it's false above the line, that means below the line are going to be all the points that are true. Now I look to my next boundary line. I'll do that one over here. Again, you plug in 0 in for x and 0 in for y. So therefore, I have 0 is greater than 12, which again is false. So here, my point is false for this boundary line. So I'm going to shade above. And therefore, you can see the only region where both inequalities are going to be true now is going to be this region right here. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that is how you graph and solve a system of linear inequalities. Thanks.